All right, we have reached the appointed hour and uh, we have a quorum. So uh, we'll start the meeting. I'll call the meeting to order. I'll read the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 12th of October, uh, 2023. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the aid interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Act. Our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance. And uh, we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's <clears throat> agenda includes uh, a request for determination of applicability to determine if a septic system installation in the riverfront and bordering land subject to flooding, uh, flooding area is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance, this on Mount Tom Road. And then a notice of intent for utility pole re relocation and removal of uh, 51 trees in the riverfront area, uh, this uh, uh, in, um, river road in Leeds. Um, so uh, first, let's see if uh, there's any general public comment not having to do with the case before us today. And if not, uh, we had no minutes uh, for this week to approve. Uh, so uh, move to the uh, first case, a request for determination of applicability to determine if a septic system installation uh, in riverfront and bordering land subject to flooding is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance on Mount Tom Road. Who's here to uh, talk to us about that? That would be me. Um, so Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group here, um, representing uh, the Highway Auto Salvage Group. Um, and so, yeah, before you is uh, a request for determination for the installation of a uh, Title V compliant septic system. Um, as some of you may know, this goes back um, a year or two to a uh, enforcement order that was um, issued by the uh, by DEP for a non-compliant septic system or um, a waste system out there. They had a, a, a number of issues, among them being a, a non-compliant tight tank um, that was um, that had some other you know issues related to it. Um, because there is a, uh, a sewer service, part of the city municipal service that does extend down Route 10 past that uh, past that site, they had to go through a fair amount of due diligence to prove that connection to that system was not feasible. So that's what's been happening, you know, partially in the meantime, um, is working with the railroad to understand, you know, jacking costs and all of that stuff. So all of that to say is that, you know, that path seemed... Um, seemed unreasonable in terms of cost and um, uh, just overall um, construction. And so the next step was to see if a compliant system could be installed on that site. And so um, I'll share with you just a couple of images, but we've been working with Cold Spring Iron Environmental uh, to design the septic system. Um, just to back up a little bit, so the, the auto salvage um, business, you know, is, is, is you know, parallels uh, route, route 10 and 5 um, and the railroad. The entrance is right near the interchange with 91. Um, their main office building um, is, is located here, this small structure um, with a larger garage and, and facility behind it. The area that they were able to perk is under this little collection of cars that you see in this picture. Um, and so I'll share the plan set that was provided that gives you some more details. Um, but we did some limited survey in this area um, because that was needed for the septic design. This is the area that I was referring to where the, where the cars are. Um, there's a bank here, which um, as noted delineates the, um, uh, the riverfront um, boundaries roughly um, this entire um, you know, area, as you know, is all within the hundred year floodplain. So obviously that's, um, that's resource area to be, to be aware of. Um, this, uh, septic system, um, uh, does occur all within, you know, obviously previously disturbed areas. Um, the other thing to note just with respect to, uh, floodplain 
is that the, as you can see in the detail, the final grade and the existing grade are the same. So there is no loss in compensatory storage, which is obviously something to be concerned about. Um, but this is going to establish the, the same grades that exist now. There is going to be a border, uh, protection border of, um, of bollards or, or parking markers to prevent anybody from you know, driving or parking uh, cars on top of this. But um, this would reload this would replace the existing tight tank which is in this location with a, um, a, a 1500 gallon septic tank which would then get piped via gravity to a leach field um, and all of that would be compliant and has been submitted to the health department for their review so this is really the last step um, to to them moving forward and hopefully getting something that's more more compliant more in compliance with what than what's there now Questions from commissioners? Now, referring to the map, where would be the reserve area? Uh, Looks like a concrete pad is going to be where the reserve area would be. I, yeah, I'd have to defer to Alan, I think, for disposal area. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with where where and how that would work. It, I mean, obviously there's a, a very limited area um, and this may include you know, the reserve area, but I don't know. It's gonna be a pro that's very close to the entrance, right? Yes, the entrance is is right here, right. So trucks coming in towing cars behind them, that's not gonna be a problem hitting the bollards there? No, this is set off to the side. So you can see the bollards here, the driveway entrance is here. Okay. So they, they would come in and, you know, come around this corner. The uh, underground pipe uh, would be uh, protected from crushing. Um, that would be, pipe. yeah, it would either be, yeah, cast iron or, or you know, schedule 40. Um, I'm not sure what he's got called out but um yeah obviously that would be that would be yeah so he's got schedule 40 um so i presume that's been considered as part of this design but they would certainly protect that hmm. i have a question uh, <clears throat> memory seems to serve that there was extreme flooding of mount tom road back in the 1980s. Um, and the property is um, sandwiched between Mount Tom Road and what the Mill River, right? And I'm wondering what, how, how characteristic is that flooding? That was less than a hundred years ago. Um, are we done with that kind of flooding? It looked catastrophic to Highway Auto Salvage as I uh, remember it. Mm. Yeah, I honestly don't know. I mean, obviously, this is all within floodplain, so there is there is um, there is the risk that um, you know within a hundred years you're going to get a, a flood that will um, you know envelop a lot of that territory that that land. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> obviously, with respect to the septic system, it's you know the the perk tests and the design of that system have got to comply with um, you know state standards and and local you know health department standards. So insofar as its ability to, to function appropriately, that's, you know, at least that's been achieved. <laughs> well, hopefully the hundred year flood already happened. <laughs> um, how high is the berm? Uh, which berm? The one that this bank here? Yes, to the uh, east. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know as though we did a full survey to the bottom of the bank, just because we weren't um, I mean, I, I recall just from being in the field, it's, it's probably all of four to six feet, maybe. Mm -hmm. That sounds more. Better. I made the mistake of paddling in that body of water years ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Brave. I remember how close it was to the property. Mm. <clears throat> What's the flood zone elevation there? Oh geez, uh, I don't know, but it's you know obviously it's it's it, this is 
it extends much beyond this property. I think it's around 123, and if so, then... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's 123 for mo most of the Mill River. Okay, yeah. I mean, for most yeah. of the Connecticut. Um, but that just sits in under this, six feet of water anyway. Hmm. <clears throat> Fair question. Have, have they, um, they consider other materials for the uh, the piping besides Schedule 40 PVC and um, and um, wondering even something stronger like Schedule 80 or, or is that, is, do you know, you have I, a sense for how much overburden there would be? No, I don't. And I think, you know, obviously that's going to be a major concern um, of theirs after spending all this money for, you know, for a new septic and, and yeah. going through this process. So, um I'm certainly gonna, you know, suggest that they, you know, bolster that up, however, <laughs> however much they can afford. Um, mm -hmm. I think Carl's excavating is is lined up to do the work, so um, I, I'm happy to work with them and and make sure that they've got a material in there that will, you know, take take that abuse, take that traffic. Yeah. Right. Other questions, comments from commissioners. How infeasible economically was it to, would it have been to connect to the sewer system? Um, the, the, the issue is the railroad. Um, uh, it, was, uh, it wasn't so much the, the, the <clears throat> infrastructure, it was the jacking requirements to get a pipe below both of those tracks. And then the, you know, on-site engineer that's required for any work um, that happens in the railroad that's got to be, you know, hired by the railroad. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, that added $50,000 to the cost easily. It was. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and Jeff, I had noted that while a lot of this is predating the, the Wetlands Protection Act, over the years, there certainly has been some creep and some additional violations, which, which would really take mm -hmm. some time to sort out. Ordinarily, it would make sense for the commission to consider those uh, when a wetlands application is filed, but there's it's, there's another application that's just been filed for a solar facility that the commission should be seeing before the end of 2023. So it might make sense just to consider it at that point. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Sarah, you mentioned that there's an NOI pending. Yeah, yeah. So that's the one. So there's one that was submitted, um, <clears throat> not quite ready to be scheduled for a hearing yet. There's some issues that need to be worked out, but it's pending at the moment. So we'll, we'll get another bite at this apple in terms of imposing conditions. And and I think that'd be the right approach. You know, it'd be nice to get the septic fixed. Um, yes. <laughs> regardless. And uh, if we get a chance to correct the other violations as a part of a solar installation, that makes, a, makes sense. Any other questions or uh, comments from commissioners? Uh, so this is uh, uh, an RDA, so we don't need to close the hearing. Um, we uh, can, uh, someone want to make a motion that uh, this is, yes, it's in a, a resource area, but we can issue a negative determination with this uh, box two. Um, mm -hmm. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. <clears throat> Second. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? If not, uh, Sarah, roll call. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Unanimous. Great. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Very good. We'll see you soon. We will see you soon. Have a good night. Thanks. And uh, then we have, uh, and we are actually on time, so we can go right ahead. Uh, notice of intent for utility pole relocation and removal of 51 trees <clears throat> um, uh, within the riverfront of the Mill River, this on uh, River Road in Leeds. And Who's here? To, Melissa Cody, okay. Good evening. Thank you. Melissa Cody from Tie and Bond on behalf of National Grid. 
Um, would it be all right with the commission if I shared my screen? Sure. Excellent. <clears throat> I just want to make sure um, you can all see the topographic map. It's there. Great. Um, so uh, the commission has received a notice of intent <clears throat> for the relocation of utility poles um, on the west side of River Road in Leeds. Um, as you can see, this is very near the um, Williamsburg town line. Um, the poles currently are in an off-road right-of-way. Uh, so the existing utility <laughs> distribution poles are along the west side of the road and then around the driveway to um, this facility, um, it the, the poles deviate from the roadway and they traverse um, an off right of way, uh, off road right of way that roughly parallels the road, um, goes up and over the uh, a very uh, significant topographic change. And then about after about 750 to 800 feet um, comes back down to the edge of the road. Uh, <clears throat> National Grid has uh, has proposed the er, relocating the poles to the edge of road within the maintained roadway right of way. Um, and they want to abandon this off-road right of way. I'm going to advance to an aerial photograph that gives a, a better view of things. <clears throat> so this work is within the 200 foot riverfront area of the Miller, uh, the Mill River. Um, if you're familiar with the road, it's a very narrow corridor. Um, so as you can see, um, pole 31 is an existing structure and um, this is where the poles start to deviate from the roadway, the edge of roadway, and they are offset from the road and kind of create this maintained distribution line corridor um, before they uh, to go up and over the topographic high and then they come back down. Um, on River Road, there's a little bit of a gravel pull off up here. I don't know if folks are familiar with River Road from their daily travels. Um, or occasional travels, but there's a, a small gravel pull off. This is a section of road where there's a, a, vert, a concrete wall and a lot of uh, slope reinforcement armoring along the river. Uh, so this, this work will essentially um, abandon that off road right of way. They'll remove the existing poles and they'll allow that to restore. And then the poles will just be maintained as most other distribution lines along the edge of the road. Um, in order to achieve this in the safety clearances, there are a number of trees um, adjacent to the road. I'm gonna zoom in again, um, indicated by these green dots and they vary in diameter um, of them. Uh, roughly 23 are greater than 10 inch DBH. Some are, some are dead. Um, and they were included in that in the total tally. Um, but as you can see, they're um, off the edge of the road. They're between the road and the rock face, basically. Um, the work is uh, basically in the first 100 feet of uh, riverfront area. It's outside floodplain and it's out um, basically right. This yellow line indicates the uh, local 40 foot buffer to um, BLSF associated with the Mill River. Um, so it, the work is uh, not exempt from the ordinance um, and it, oops, excuse me, um, uh, you know, within, within riverfront area, it's not encroaching closer than the existing developed conditions. Um, and beneficially, it will essentially allow the restoration of that routinely maintained corridor um, on the more intact riverfront area side of the road. Uh, I, I will add DEP uh, issued a file number uh, for this project or for this notice of intent, um, 2460772. The one comment was to wait for natural heritage's comments. Um, natural heritage under 
file uh, tracking number 238435, issued a determination of no adverse effect under the Wetlands Protection Act and no take under the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act. So of these trees to be removed, mm -hmm. um, uh, I imagine there are two categories uh, uh, of, in, that went into the decision of removing them. Some, they may be actually obstructing the path of the new uh, utility line uh, and or mm -hmm. the placement of new utility poles. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the second category would be trees that in the future might fall on um, utility lines. Um, uh, what's the proportion of uh, those two uh, categories of, of trees for removal? Um, I would, so there are 23 trees that are currently 10 inches DBH or greater. I don't have heights on the trees, um, but I, my, based on the diameter at breast height, I would say the 23 are the um, currently sizable and in, in the path of the, of the overhead lines. And um, the remaining trees are either uh, within a safety clearance of the overhead lines. You know, there needs to be a certain distance. Um, excuse me, there are sirens in the background here. Um, and that would um, potentially have the, the mature height that, or the height at maturity that could uh, pose a threat to the, to the overhead well, and, utility lines. And, and also from the topo map and, and the photos, that mm -hmm. there are uh, uh, there's a, there's a relatively steep up gradient um, right. to the west, so the trees that even if they were smaller might be uh, correct. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on the photos you, you know, mentioned. In, in an ice storm or something might m might come down. Um, True, but uh, they they won't be going way way up the slope. They're they're really you know looking at a standard along the. Um, along the edge of roadway. And here's some of that bedrock um, yeah. I mentioned. Right. What, what possessed them to put the uh, poles where they are now in the first place, up on the slope uh, the there? the off-road right-of-way? Um, I have been trying to hazard a guess. Uh, of course, those poles existed long before any of the people working at National Grid were working there. <laughs> um, and so my estimate, my guesstimate is that um, I believe River Road was reconstructed at some point yeah. and this created the opportunity um, to have space along the edge of the road. It may also have to do with um, ease of maintenance in the future. Um, poles along the road are much easier to maintain and repair than um, access off off road. Uh, an, a, another uh, question, which uh, is an interstate question, but in Vermont, uh, one of the things they've started to do is install poles that are uh, one and a half to two times the normal height um, so that they can string wires above the path of falling branches of, of many trees. Um, huh. it, 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 does any of that uh, happen in Massachusetts, as far as you know? Um, not that I'm aware of, but um, I'm now interested in, and we'll be asking National Grid and, and Eversource about that. <laughs> um. <clears throat> I mean, there's still times, uh, I, I know uh, places that I'm familiar with in Vermont, that there are times when there's just no way around it, even if you put a uh, uh, hundred yard tall pole, it's on a steep slope and there would be risk of uh, in an ice storm. Um, uh, things falling and the, no way to exactly prune it so that that won't happen. Um, so sometimes they do have to remove trees, but in many other cases, uh, adding another uh, 50 feet or so to the height of the pole gets it out of the reach of mm -hmm. uh, the branches that might fall. So, uh, mm -hmm. and just to, I think what we're trying to figure out is how, how can this project be considered a, uh, an improvement over current conditions from, from our perspective, not, not from the utilities sure. perspective, but from our perspective. Sure. So, so right now, um, 
you know, the roadway corridor, you know, despite the fact that there are tree removals proposed, this this is the roadway corridor and there is side trimming and and normal routine maintenance associated with the roadway um, in this corridor. Uh, what this project will, from a from an environmentally beneficial perspective, this project will take that routinely maintained right of way that's parallel and offset from the roadway corridor and allow that to return to a natural state. So rather than being mowed and maintained through routine vegetation management, um, that will essentially create a more intact, ripe, you know, forested corridor um, that is currently altered as opposed to consolidating it along the roadway. Well, the help to uh, get back to a natural state, would they be adverse to uh, planting of uh, trees? Kind of offset sure the removal? Does the commission have a, a particular ratio that it relies on? Or is it um, judgment based on conditions in the field? We don't have anything prescribed by ordinance okay. at the moment. So it's more of a case by case, project by project consideration. Sure. Um, I'm confident that National Grid would be amenable to um, giving the restoration a head start. Among other things, uh, an intentional head start can prevent some of the uh, mm -hmm. invasive species, which would no doubt opportunistically um, take advantage of the disturbance if, if there weren't that uh, effort mm -hmm. on the part of National Grid. Mm -hmm. So um, certainly, I, I think that would be completely acceptable. Um, yeah, and, and from a tree removal standpoint, they're, they're just cutting them down. They're not thinking of pulling stumps or anything, are they? No, they're not. They're not okay. pulling out the root, the root mass, no. Because I know I'd be very concerned about erosion. Okay. Right. Yes. And, and that that just um because they, you know, in, in general, there there needs to be routine maintenance, um, vegetation management that's um disproportionate to the effort. The removed trees are not gonna be stumped, right? They're just right. Pump's going to remain with the right. They're just going to they're just going to cut them off and and then we'll remove the they'll either chip and chip on chip into a truck or load into a a truck and remove from the site. There's the debris is not going to be dropped in place. Okay. Could, one more quick question: Are they going to use the existing poles that are already placed along the road? Are they? Yes. Yeah, okay, so they're not dropping new poles in. Okay. The only other option is to go underground. Okay. But uh, <laughs> no given the rock face there, it would be yeah. extremely expensive. Be yes, yep. Yeah. That would be tunneling. Yeah. That would well, cause a lot some, more disturbance for sure. Some cities, uh, you come in with a new subdivision are insisting on no poles with the electricity on the ground. Mm. That way they uh, there's not problems with trees falling on lines and you know calling out the utility guys in the middle of the night. Everybody yeah, still has power. Pro pros and cons. Um certainly uh, <laughs> there there's less hazard associated with wind and tree fall. Um Definite pros with underground um, con is that it's can be more challenging to locate and repair. Yeah, but but resiliency wise, generally speaking, underground is is a more preferred option from that perspective. Well, I can see the. Uh, the desire on the part of the utility um, to have this happen. Um, just trying to make sure that we in um, good conscience can say, uh, yes, it, you know, it doesn't otherwise, it's a disturbance. It doesn't otherwise uh, 
and it's within a protected zone, so it doesn't otherwise meet strict performance standards, but because it's a utility um, and a, uh, a limited project definition applies that, um, but we, we're still supposed to say that, to, to determine that it's representing a net improvement. And I'm having a little trouble seeing how much of an improvement that's, that's gonna be. Um, well, I, I would know. offer that the area of off-roadway right-of-way that's going to be um, yeah. restored is roughly 750 to 800 linear feet. Um, and that will create a more intact riparian corridor um, and forested habitat than consolidating, than by moving the lines to the consolidated footprint of the roadway, essentially. Um. When you figured your disturbance, you figured just the disturbance removing the, the old poles, but not the taking down of the 47 or 50 trees or whatever it was. Um, so based on basal area, um, the, the impact of tree removal um, in terms of canopy was based on basal area. Um, the an approximate it's um the granted it was in the previous uh wetland delineation manual and i couldn't tell you off the top of my head if the updated version still has this table but there's a um for determining uh basal area of trees based on diameter at breast height um and so that's what uh the value in the um in the uh, notice of intent was based on because they are it's not a, you know, it's not like someone's coming in with a, a brontosaurus and clear cutting. It's, you know, selectively cutting um, and not disturbing the ground surface. I don't know if you can get a brontosaurus up there. I don't think you could even, you're right. It's it's a very <laughs> narrow roadway. That is, that is certain. What uh, protection from, because the river's just down gradient to the right, there to the east of the road, uh, what protections uh, are going to be necessary? I probably uh, saw this in the application, but I'm not uh, remembering um, in order to prevent any of this. To, uh, yes, it's it's not going to be a, a big clear cut. It's going to be more selective, but to prevent, um, uh, uh, you know, I guess what the sort of predecessor question is, how long is it going to take once the work starts? And then we can think about it, how likely is it there's going to be torrential rains while the work is going on, uh, and uh, what protections then would uh, protect the, uh, the the river to the east? So the the road actually um, the the crown of the road slopes away from the river. Um, runoff is directed toward the west, mm -hmm. not toward the east, mm -hmm. um, roughly, and there's. Pretty, they're not disturbing the ground surface. So, in terms of um, creating an erodible surface, um, it's it's not like they are tracking up or um, otherwise, you know, disturbing the ground so that that material is ready to be mobilized during a rain event um, causing runoff. Um, if <sighs> There's not a lot of space. We I, we could require that they, you know, typically they follow National Grid's BMP manual. Um, we could put a straw wattle against the guardrail uh, mm -hmm. posts if if that was acceptable to the commission. I don't think I don't think it would be effective or prudent to put them on the west side of the road because they would just get run over. I think there's a ditch along there, isn't there? Um, a little bit of a swale, yeah. Yeah. And but no not, conveyances within the, the project area. Yeah. yeah. I mean, where they're not digging up the ground, they're just cutting the trees down, leaving the stumps. Yeah, no, it's 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 reassuring. I, I uh, Although I've ridden that road dozens of times on my bike, I've never quite noticed which way the slope goes. Uh, yeah. So it's... You're, it, you're braver it's than I am. Than, Takes yeah. care of some of my concerns. Yeah, I, I I walked it the other day, and I you know the risk of erosion seems 
really minimal given the slope and the and the conditions out there. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and I guess this is a uh, a judgment question um, when determining which trees were going to be identified. And also, I saw two different things, Sarah. I think in your um, staff report talked about removal of forty seven trees, whereas in the application they talked about fifty one. There were uh, so when the application was first submitted, it wasn't quite clear. Mm -hmm. So I I may have listed the the an incorrect number. Um, okay. Melissa, right. can you confirm that the actual number of trees within riverfront is at forty? Um, the the application references um, forty seven within the roadway, um, and those are living trees. Okay. So, so I, I believe uh -huh. um, I believe that the confusion stems from um, National Grid's vegetation management crew identifies every tree. Um, living or dead. Um, so it's 47 living, and I believe four were identified oh. as dead um, that they still need to take down for the same hazard reasons. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but dead trees do also pro provide a habitat. They do. Benefit, so. <clears throat> they do. But these are not overhanging the river. Like these are, none of these are overhanging the river bank itself. Um, yeah, so and they, none they of the trees seem like habitat. they were, except maybe one that was leaning a little bit. None of them seemed like they were actually providing any shade to the river itself. Yeah. So that wasn't a consideration. It was more just the removal of mm -hmm. such a significant mm -hmm. number within Riverfront. Yeah. Well, how long so do you think the project's going to take? Right. Um, the tree removal, I would say, depending on conditions, because obviously uh, <clears throat> depends on uh, how many crews they can get out there and, um, you know, traffic control. But I would say at least one, but not more than two weeks, most likely. Um, but I can I can verify their their schedule and provide that to the commission through Sarah's office. And uh, uh, the judgment about um, how risky a tree had to be, because some mm -hmm. of them are labeled as hazard trees. Um, um, mm -hmm. what, what were the criteria? I mean, how, how, you know, if on one extreme, it's like, well, let's knock them all down and make our job stringing the new wires easy, um, as opposed to uh, let's, arduously protect as many as we can, even if it makes our work more difficult. Where in that continuum was the, the judgment that led to these 47 trees? So so these are the trees that are or could reasonably within the near future um, contact the line. So there's a, a resilience, a reliability factor to, to doing this because during a storm event, um, obviously it's it's all hands on deck and the need to restore power as quickly as possible is is a priority. Um, so it, it has to do with trees that currently or in the reasonable near future um, could contact the lines. So it's, it's related to the, the, the height geometry, but not the health of the tree. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments or questions from commissioners? I have one more question I want to ask Sarah. Um, I always, in, when we deal with limited projects and the rules are a little squirrely, um, I'm always uh, uncertain about that. So how, what, how much of an improvement as opposed to um, a, a no worsening of the current situation? Um, uh, the, I want the commission to conclude before we can say, yeah, go ahead and do it. Yeah, and the, the CMR isn't particularly helpful in providing guidance as to what would constitute an overall improvement. I've 
So there, there's a lot of discretion on behalf of the commission. Yeah, I would think that with with the reduced vegetation management, there's, at least in my view, I'd, I see a net gain. Makes sense. Yeah, I drove up there and I did <laughs> I parked, but I didn't walk all the way along the roadway. And I mean, then those other poles, except in one area, are really not that far further in. Um, yeah. But they do require clearing back there. Okay, any other comments or questions? If not, uh, motion to close the hearing. Moved. And a second? Second. All in favor, Sarah, roll call. Right, quick roll call. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? <coughs> yes. So, um, in Did addition to start, our... Oh, sorry. Could the applicant stop sharing your screen? Just yeah. there we go. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Um, <clears throat> so in addition to our standard conditions, any suggestions of uh, special conditions for this case? Um, <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, I think we ought to require some tree uh, planting. Right, some, well, some kind of uh, um, giving the natural recovery a head start. Um, I'm not sure. Some of that might be trees. Some of that might be lower uh, uh, foliage, uh, shrubbery. Uh, but, um, and it, Sarah, if it's okay with you, that would be a condition that the plan for those plantings be submitted for staff approval uh, prior to construction. Sure. So that would be one additional condition. Anything else? If not, then someone want to make a motion to grant an order of conditions with standard conditions plus that additional condition about uh, uh, plantings. So move. Yeah. Second. Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Sarah? David? Paul? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a good yeah, evening. Good luck. You too. Thanks. Good luck. <clears throat> and well, let's see what we got. Anything else, Sarah? For uh, oh, we have the emergency certification for the septic at Rocky Hill. Yeah. the The only other update for me was after consultation with Kevin, I issued um, an emergency certification for a septic system replacement on Rocky Hill Road. Not entirely clear where the resource area was. It was almost certainly in buffer zone, but was within a maintained lawn area. And this was a situation where the health department went out to do an inspection and the tank was leaking onto the grass. Uh, oh. and there, they didn't have a lot of alternatives or time to pull something together. So it seemed like that was something to take care of right away. <laughs> Thanks for not scheduling a site visit. <laughs> 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 wow. David, I have a to brief, recommend a very your, brief site visit. You were you had the perfect setup tonight, David, with the, the black shirt and the black background. It's like a floating <laughs> head. <It> was, <laughs> I worked on that for a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Very good. All right. Well, if uh, no other business, then um I, I, I want to state my inclination is for now to keep meeting via Zoom um, until we get a. I've, I've had all three of my vaccinations, um, including the RSV now, um, and uh, so I'm I'm theoretically protected. Um, seems like it's an unpredictable situation still yeah. for a while. When I talk to my doctor friends, that it's 
going to be a while. And so maybe it'll, it'll start being everybody's <clears throat> opinion that it's well under control, but uh, I'd just soon not take the chance for a while. But I wanted to float that because uh, I'm, I'm not totally adverse to saying, oh, yeah, well, let's let's revisit this in a month and maybe we'll go indoors and start meeting again. It was very nice to actually see people on a site visit out at Cook Avenue. So um, it'd be even better if on a regular basis, we could actually get together in the same room again. But uh, what did people think? I'd say I mean, maybe revisit it in the spring. Get through the winter, you don't spring. have to okay. slide yeah. sideways yeah. down the town. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. Sure. But by yeah. me, so Zoom I, it will be for the time being. Jen? I, I have to run to another meeting, so I just wanted to say okay. thank you. Oh, very <laughs> good. Good to see you. Thank you. And I think we're about done anyway. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Sarah, what do we got yeah, coming up thanks. next time? Uh, we have, Anything? there's a couple things. Let's see. I'll have to look at the, I don't, let me look quick, actually. We should have at least a few minor things for the 26th. Um, and then November 9th should have a few more. Um, but I'll I'll follow up quickly and let you know okay. if you have anything scheduled for the twenty sixth. Very good. Thanks very much. Thanks everybody.